Hi everybody, welcome to another episode. We are just after the pool phases of Eurovolley. It's been already a great experience. We have so many teams to talk about that I had to cut out a lot of parts from this episode because it would have lasted forever. I'm just gonna focus on the top teams and some teams that surprised me and I want to comment a bit on. So to start out, I want to quickly talk about Serbia because what to say about this team? It is the Serbia we know and love. They have an incredible roster. They have the roster of last year plus Maja Ognjenovic. So we have Boskovic, Popovic, Busha, Stefanovic, Ognjenovic, Drcha, Lozo, Lazovic, Pusic and more. It's a great team. It's a great roster. They don't look invincible like they did last year, but they are a complete team. They beat Poland, which was the toughest matchup in their pool. And to think that they're basically their backup setter is the setter they won the World Cup last year with, which is Dercha. That's incredible. They just have a great bench. They're gonna go far in this competition. When it comes to Poland, somebody in the comments last week said something like, well, Poland isn't really technically a super team. They don't really have a superstar. I mean, they do have Wawosh and they have Stisiak. Maybe they're not such superstars as Vargas, for instance, or as Boskovic herself. But I think the supporting cast is incredible. They have so, such power also from the outside hitters. Wukashik, she's so powerful and she's so determined. And Rozanski is also great in defense, not just in attack. And I've seen Vovosh literally set a ball from the floor. So I've always wondered why are people, why do people say she's the best setter in the world? And that showed me why some people might might think that. Up next, I want to talk about Italy because this Italian team is everything we were hoping for and more. It's a bit of the same situation as with Serbia. It's really, really, really a great roster. And it's kind of unfair that some nations have such star powers and others don't. They have not only Paola Gonu as opposite, she's in her prime right now. She makes way less mistakes than some years ago. Her elevation is top notch. So she's able to fly above the block. She can ace, she can block, and she also is pretty good at block cover or defense. But they also have another opposite, Antropova. And they've been playing with having one of them as the opposite and the other on the bench or having them both at the same time on the court just like Turkey does for Vargas and Ebrar and tell me now if this is not a super team Antropova was born in Iceland to Russian parents and then grew up in Italy so in fact from what I understand she grew up Italian she just didn't have the citizenship and she just got it recently so she was able to join this Italian team she's more than two meters tall we don't have that many players that are above two meters and the rest of the roster they have these two uh, outside hitters which makes me smile because they're so different from each other Miriam Silla which is the captain of the Italian team such an experienced player she played with Imoko for a long time now she plays in Milan she is very powerful she gives it all on the floor she gives it all when she spikes she's really a power player and on the other hand we have Elena Petrini which is such a calm soul that's that's the vibe she gives me when she plays she's great at defense and famous for not wearing knee pads while throwing herself on the floor. And when she's in the front row, she's mostly a smart player. So she'll hit a block out, she'll hit the back corner, she will tip. So really two opposites that complement each other. I want to say something about the Netherlands and Germany, which I was thinking of as the tier right below the super teams. How are they doing? Now, Germany, unfortunately, had an injury. Anna Ortmann injured her knee in the very first match. And it seems like this team, the German team, hasn't recovered. On the one hand, they seem to be struggling psychologically. It happened several times that, for instance, in the matchup against Sweden, they were unable to bring themselves back. Whereas Sweden was having fun, enjoying themselves, they looked a little bit like a NCAA team. Germany was really stuck in a rut and they actually ended up losing that match. And I think they have a little bit of an issue with serve-receive and maybe really not having Ortmann so unexpectedly really bothered them. And the Netherlands, they had a little bit of an easier pool. They were the best team of their pool. So... They're, they're a solid team, they're well organized, they seem to have good chemistry, they seem to be getting along with their coach, to be happy to play together. They played against France, and here's where I want to say something about France. First of all, I want you to have a look at what the Dutch team does when Kazot is serving. It tells me two things. Firstly, that the Dutch coach pays a lot of attention to these things, and I really like that. So he's telling the players to behave differently according to who serves. Of course, 
all teams at a high level do that, but this is quite an extreme adaptation. So it also tells me that they see Kazot as a threat, that she might score on the back line, so she might ace on the back line, and immediately when she serves, they take a couple step forwar steps forward because actually the serve doesn't seem to be that long, so they need to cover short as well. Yeah, Kazot is, in my opinion, currently the best player on this French team next to the very experienced middle blocker, Christina Bauer. They have qualified for the eighth finals. Everything is a plus from now on. Happy to see them play this well. And lastly, of course, Turkish team. If the question was, what type of Turkish team are we going to get in this competition? The answer is, it's a very competitive, very fierce, very determined team with great starters and a great bench. Although they had a very slow start in a lot of the matches, for instance, against Sweden, Czechia, against Greece, despite the initial nerves, they showed concentration. Their coach, Daniele Santarelli, is expecting only the best from them. There was this commentator while I was watching the game, it was like, whoa, these girls, they, they are so harsh on themselves and they expect only the best. At some point, Zara, they were up like three or four points. She missed a block and she was so mad at herself. And this means that they're competing against themselves, which is the best way to compete, especially if you're the top one in the world, as they are. The service was a great part of their success so far. And so far, they have scored so many aces and not just the usual, you know, suspects, Ebrar and Vargas, but really everyone, Eda, Zehra, which I was really pleased to see because she struggled with the service in the past. Elif scored aces. Ilkin was really a collective effort. They also had a lot of service errors, especially in the match against Greece. But I don't think that's too worrisome. I think in the important matches, they will get their act together when it comes to that. And when you try to ace so much, you're going to end up with some misservice. That was all for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time.